He said, I gave my back to the smiters, my cheeks to them that plucked off my hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Who were these that were smiting, hitting, striking with vengeance on a Lord? It was inflicted by a religious movement that felt threatened by one who had invited them to simply come and reason together. Jesus was literally murdered by a robed clergy. They instigated this whole business. It was to protect a religious system, a religious movement that couldn't afford to be told it could be wrong or in error. Because they could not stand the truth, because they could not stand the criticism, or they could not stand the light of the Holy Spirit cast upon it, they rebelled against it and in the process crucified our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Look at the fanaticism and the anger of those who are slapping his face, plucking off his beard, all to protect the religious movement. Jesus warned of this kind of religious smiting. He said, Yea, the time will come that whosoever killeth you will think he doeth God's service. These men were religious men. They wore white robes. They tithed. They were devout in their religion. But these devout men were murderers. They had a smiting spirit. They will do these things unto you because they have not known the Father and they've not known me. The smiters are still with us and they're still smiting the back of Jesus. The smiters who are smiting the body of Jesus Christ are smiting Christ himself. That's how serious this message is tonight. And I believe the Holy Ghost has given me this as a warning to the body of Christ. And the warning is this. All of you who have itching ears, all of you who want to go someplace and hear and see something new, you don't want to pay the price of digging into the Word of God. You don't want to go through the discipline of the Holy Ghost because the Bible says, whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. They will not want to hear the truth. They will not want to hear about sacrifice and suffering. They want some easy thing. Americans have become so addicted to instant everything. But when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ, there is a price. There is a price. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. If it will not stand on the criteria of the Word of God and judge every movement, every revival, everything that calls itself of God, if you do not judge it, then any high-spirited man, any man with a strong spirit can come and overrule your spirit and send you to hell. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. It's the duty of every pastor. It's my duty to stand up here tonight and do what I'm about to do. It's your duty as a believer. Every new thing that you hear is to test it. Don't touch it until you've tested it by the word of God. Till you've tried the spirit that's behind it. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. The meaning is this. If you're going to say that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, then he's got to be the Lord of your life. He is Lord of my life. He is Lord. He is God in the flesh. But he's God in my flesh. He's here. He rules. He reigns. All my motives, everything comes out of the Lordship of Jesus Christ in my life and my being. That which is of God must be permeated, saturated with the Spirit of Jesus Christ. That Spirit of Christ is what? It is gentle. It is loving. It is kind. It is easy to be entreated. If its spring and fountain comes from heaven, if it's of God, the fruit of it is going to be the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Everything you see, everything you hear will be Christ-like. Now, Paul is summoned from prison to stand before the Sanhedrin. Now, Paul's life, his ministry, his theology, his very lifestyle, everything is called into question now. He's being mocked, he's being ridiculed, and he faces a crowd of religious leaders. They're proud, arrogant men, men, especially the high priest Ananias. And the high priest commands a servant that's standing nearby. Smite Paul on the mouth. Smite him on the mouth. You don't touch God's anointed. You can't touch God's anointed and get away with it. How dangerous it is for any follower of Christ to wish the destruction of anyone who rejects or criticizes them. Job said, neither have I allowed my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to his soul. And he was talking about those who were speaking against him, who hated him, and rejoiced in his troubles. He said, 
for those people, I didn't allow my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to his soul. Psalms 109.17, as he loved cursing, so let it come upon him. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. God says, if you're going to curse, the curse is going to come back on you. Romans 12.14, bless them that persecute you and curse not. Let them curse, but you bless. And I would say to the leaders of movements, if you want God to bless you, and if you have been smiting, publicly apologize. Get before the people and say, that's not the Spirit of Christ. And maybe, and prayerfully, the Holy Spirit will do a new work. Hallelujah. Folks, that which is of God is easily entreated. It's defended only by the Holy Spirit. And out of it comes humility and grace and love. Can you imagine wanting to see a brother smitten all in the name of God in the defense of a coveted religious work? A coveted religious work and wanting to see somebody die? Here are the same people smiting him, attacking him, criticizing him, spitting on him. And what does Jesus say? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Here's the spirit that you have to hear. If it's of God, here's what it has to have coming forth out of it. First pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them who make peace.